بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful سبحان الله الحمد لله ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر Our excellence presents ولا اله الا الله الله اكبر سبحان Lessons from the stories of the prophets by Mufti Ismail ibn Musa Mank. Musa alayhi salam and Bani Israel, part two. Moses, peace be upon him, and the Bani Israel, part two. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We begin by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى May the blessings and salutations be upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless his entire household May he bless all his companions. May he bless every single one of us. May he grant us all goodness. Beloved brothers and sisters, as you notice, the days of Ramadan are coming to an end. And we are now in the 27th part of the Quran. You will notice shorter verses. These shorter, more complicated verses were revealed in Mecca, most of them. Because at that stage, the kuffar of Mecca did not want to listen to the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose a certain method in order for the Qur'an to get into their ears and to be digested by their hearts. رَغْمَ أُنُوفِهِمْ Which means even though they didn't want. So what had happened is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed very very short verses. These people used to put their fingers into their ears. So whenever they heard the Qur'an, they began to put their fingers into their ears. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited short verses. Each time they heard, they put their fingers into their ears, they had time to digest what was being said. When they released their fingers, the next part of the verse was in, or the next verse was in. Short verse. Very powerful, piercing. These are known as the verses revealed in Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. They had their own speciality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the sweetness of the Qur'an. We read this Qur'an and it is the most powerful book. This evening we heard the verses being repeated. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِن مُدَّكِرِ Indeed, we have made this Qur'an very easy to understand. Is there anyone going to try and understand this Qur'an? The word dhikr also means over and above understanding. We've made it easy to be used as a warning. Is anyone going to take heed? And it also means we've made it easy to memorize. Is anyone going to try and do that? So this term is so powerful. If you read the surah that it is in, you will find that after the stories of each of the prophets and Allah makes mention of the huge punishment that he sent down to these nations immediately after that he says وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِن مُدَّكِرِ He says look we've made this Quran so simple to understand do you see what happened to those people don't repeat that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to understand and this is why we say the biggest gift you can give yourself is to try and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you in his own book that he sent to us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that gift. It is important as we continue, we make mention of one very, very important female who was praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala although she lived in the midst of tyranny. Who was this? The wife of Fir'aun. She was a woman who witnessed what happened. She knew Musa alayhi salam. She knew this young boy and she had brought him up in a certain manner to a great degree. And she knew that what he uttered was the truth and what her husband was saying was totally wrong and false. 
So she made a dua once to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah speaks about that dua in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا امْرَأَةَ فِرْعَوْنَ إِذْ قَالَتْ رَبِّ ابْنِ لِي عِنْدَكَ بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنْ فِرْعَوْنَ وَعَمَلِهِ وَنَجِّنِي مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah has given to you the example of the wife of Fir'aun who raised her hands and called out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, O oh Allah, O oh my Rabb, O oh my Maker, build for me close to you a house in Jannah. Listen to the exact words. Build for me close to you a house in Jannah and save me from Fir'aun and his oppression and save me from those who are oppressive. This is a dua she's making. Now look, she said, build for me close to you a house. She did not say, build for me a house close to you in Jannah, because what is more important is the closeness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have everything. So even when we make our duas, let us try and know what is more beneficial for us and how we should be making dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. So this is made mention of that such a woman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised her. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has praised her. She has been spoken about very highly. It is reported that she stayed over in Egypt when they were all drowned. She passed away later on, but she was a believing female. She believed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of this in the Quran. And this is why sometimes in the midst of tyranny, there is one person who sticks out and they might suffer great difficulty. It reminds me of people who accept Islam and their whole families are non-Muslim. Sometimes there are people who want to accept Islam, but what is stopping them is the comfort zone they are in. And this happens also with people who are wrong, but everyone around them is wrong. You find a Muslim, he has engaged in something wrong, he's oppressing a few people, but all his friends are oppressing the same people. So what will happen for him to now abstain or tell his friends, look, don't do this, he will stick out like a sore thumb. He'd rather be with them and continue. We need to understand Islam teaches us do not be like that. You make the difference. Allah will praise you with the angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us through the lips of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he makes mention of the good worshippers of his on earth to the angels. Whenever you are remembering Allah, Allah remembers you. Fi mala'in khayrin minhu. In, in some other kind that are better than us. And this is made mention of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers us when it comes to the angels. And he says, look at my worshiper. And there is discussion between them as we made mention of the Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu was a few days back. Now, there also has been brought to my notice by some of those who are sincere, alhamdulillah. Why is it that we say the Prophet Moses? Why don't we just cut out the English and say Musa alayhi salam? The reason is I've come across a lot of non-Muslims who never knew that we believe in Jesus, may peace be upon him. They thought Isa is referring to something else. They think that Musa is referring to something else. They think that Harun is referring to someone else altogether. They don't know. So because our idea and aim is not only to uplift or to increase our knowledge, but to spread this even amongst the non-Muslims, it's important we also make mention of the names that are mentioned in the Bible to say these are the prophets here is the proper authentic version of what happened to them you want to know it come and read the Quran may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us so it is not because we're trying to prove a wrong point but it is because we want to use it as a means of da'wah and calling towards the right path may Allah use us at all times to call towards the right path and may he keep us on the straight and narrow and may he grant us acceptance this evening we have three beautiful stories that are mentioned in the Quran, incidents that occurred during the life of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. We will start with the first one where there was a man, a very, very wealthy man. He passed away and he left one son, just one son. And this one son, he inherited everything. So the cousins were quite jealous and they murdered him. When they murdered him, there was a problem. There was a debate who murdered this man. 
Who murdered this man? So they went to Musa alayhi salam. They said, look, we need to know the murderer of this person. It's causing a big problem. It is splitting people, splitting communities. This is what is happening. It's causing a rift in the family and what have you. So Musa alayhi salam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one day he comes back. وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَىٰ لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً Musa alayhi salam came back to his people and he says, Oh my people, Allah has solved your problem. He wants you to sacrifice a cow. You sacrifice a cow and then you will see Allah will release the name of whoever was the murderer. So these people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam says, شَدَّدُوا فَشَدَّدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They didn't obey the instruction. They wanted to make life difficult, so Allah made it more difficult for them. This is why when we are given instruction, obey it. Don't just wait and ask more questions and so on. Obey the instruction. We'll see later on, inshallah. So it was very simple for them to obey the instruction and continue. But no, they told Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, there are many cows out there. So many cows out there. We are confused. Make dua to Allah to inform us a little bit more detail. What type of a cow does he want? He says it should neither be old nor young, some something in between, a, a, an animal meaning a cow, neither too old nor is it too young, something in between, and do what you've been ordered, follow the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your issue will be made easy. Now they seen the cows, they had a category of cows. So the older were removed from their minds and the young were also removed and they had this middle category of cows. They went back to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, the middle category of cows are too many. So tell us what's the color of this cow? Make dua to Allah. Qalu da'u lana rabbaka yubayyil lana ma launuha. O Musa alayhi salam, make dua, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let him tell us what's the color of the cow. So Musa alayhi salam made dua again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ صَفْرَاءُ فَاقِعُ اللَّوْنُهَا تَسُرُّ النَّاظِرِينَ You want to know the color? It is a rich yellow color that attracts the attention of the people and is cool to the eye. It makes the people who look at it happy. So it's a rich yellow color. Something let's say more golden a golden color of a cow so mashallah they started looking they found quite a few so they went to musa alayhi salam ya musa we've got a problem we don't know which one exactly to slaughter so now you tell us make dua to allah to tell us a little bit more detail Oh Musa, we are confused. There's too many of these. And we don't know. They're all quite similar. So you tell us, ask Allah to give us a little bit more detail. And inshallah, we will be guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds. وَلَا تَسْقِ الْحَرْثَ مُسَلَّمَةٌ لَا شِيَةَ فِيهَا What happened? Allah made it very difficult for them. Allah says, it must be a cow that was neither prepared to till the land nor prepared to be used for irrigation. It must be perfect without a spot on it. No mark, nothing. Now it became very hard. They started hunting for the cow. They told Musa alayhi salam, now you've come with something that is understandable. Now you've brought something understandable. So they went around, they started hunting for the cow. They found one cow, one cow belonging to someone. What had happened and whose cow was this? There was a man, it is reported, who passed away. And he left behind a widow and an orphan, one child and an orphan. Meaning an, oh, the orphan child and his widow. And he had made a dua prior to passing away. Ya Allah, I'm dying at this age. I'm leaving my wife and child. Ya Allah, I leave them in your care. You look after them. What did he have? He only had one calf, a little calf. So he instructed his wife before he passed away, take this calf 
and release it into the forest because I don't trust these people. If they know that they are weak people, they will usurp the wealth. Like what happens today. You have inheritance. Wealthy people are stealing the money of their sisters and mothers in our midst. And people don't mind. No, our father gave you when he was alive. What are you talking about? Go to the ulama, put your papers down, put your hands down, surrender. Tell them whatever Allah says, I will do. Even if I'm left without a penny, I know for as long as Allah is happy with me, let them take whatever is their share. This is what we should be doing. But wallahi, sadly, shuh. The shuh is the highest level of bukhl. A'la maratib al-bukhl. The highest level of, of stinginess man has, sadly. The more you have, the more you want. The more greedy you become. We can't release it. We become wealthy and we think for a moment that you know what? Nobody's going to catch us. So this is a lesson we learn that remember we need to fulfill our covenant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most important laws of the Sharia is what is known as al-fara'id or al-mirath. The inheritance, the sharing of the inheritance amongst the people after the death of someone is absolutely sacred. Allah is watching every split cent that is being divided. And if there's an error, in, if there is an error, complete oblivion or mistake that's one thing but if it is intentional even if it is one cent do you know what it is it is a red hot coal from the fire of jahannam take it or leave it so it's up to us what we are taking and this is why let's resolve our disputes tonight anyone has a dispute of inheritance phone them and give the people whatever is their due today tell them look abshir bi khair you need to be given good tidings glad tidings i am fearing my grave i'm fearing allah i'm not going to take all that wealth with me into my grave if it is your due it's yours and even if it means it's 20 years later it's all yours let's work it out and sort it out and believe me do it now because the spirituality outside the masjid is different from that in the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we make an intention here and now so this man as he left his cow it was a calf Allah had protected the calf that it was grazing on its own and anyone went near it, it would make sure that it went away. It didn't allow anyone to touch it. No one. Until one day when the boy grew a little bit older, the mother said, look, your dad has left a cow and it's in the forest somewhere. Go and look for it. How am I going to look for it? Anyway, as he went, there was only one cow that came to him. And when it came to him, at that time, people were looking for exactly the same cow. So they went to him and they told the young man, we want to buy this cow. It fitted everything that Musa alayhi salam was told. So he said, look, I can't sell it. I need to speak to my mother. He went to the mother. They were talking about a price and they were speaking. And then the mother said, look, how can you sell it? We don't want to sell it at all. Until the boy says, okay, finally, I'll settle for the skin of this cow filled with gold. Give it to me. They said, no problem. Mashallah, what an expensive cow. What an expensive cow. So they slaughtered the cow. They cut the cow, mashallah. After they purchased it, they slaughtered the cow. Young man became rich, mashallah. And at the same time, Allah says, فَذَبَحُوهَا وَمَا كَادُوا يَفْعَلُونَ They slaughtered it. And we need to know something. They did not have to go around hunting. When Allah told them, cut the cow, had they caught the next cow and slaughtered it, it would have still served the same purpose. But شَدَّدُوا فَشَدَّدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They wanted to make life difficult. Allah made it more difficult upon them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَتَلْتُمْ نَفْسًا فَادَّارَأْتُمْ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجٌ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ فَقُلْ نَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى وَيُرِيكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Allah says, and remember when the person was murdered, and you were debating and arguing as to who murdered that particular person. We instructed you to take a chunk of the meat from this cow and strike with it the dead man. And when he was struck, he came up alive after he had died. And he said the name of the person who murdered him and he died again. This is in the Quran. Allah says, كَذَلِكَ يُحْيِي اللَّهُ الْمَوْتَى This is how Allah gives life to the dead. Allah says, we've done it so many times in the past. We heard of in Banu Israel, a number of people who were given life after they died. Allahu Akbar. This is the qudra, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what had happened. And thereafter the problem was solved. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors and grant us a lesson from this beautiful story that is mentioned firstly the qudra of Allah secondly the matter of justice thirdly how we should not debate and argue when the truth comes to us we surrender to it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding then we have the next story also mentioned at the time of Musa alayhi salatu was salam there was a man known as Qarun Qarun was very very wealthy Allah says in the Quran إن قارون كان من قوم موسى فبغى عليهم وآتيناه من الكنوز ما إن مفاتحه لتنوء بالعصبة أولي القوة. Allah says indeed قارون was from amongst the people of Musa عليه السلام. But he had transgressed. He had engaged in transgression against them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we had blessed him with so much wealth. The description Allah gives, he says, if a group of strong men had to carry, they would find it difficult to carry only the keys to his treasures. That's how much we've given him. Look at the description. Allah says, if a group of strong people had to lift only the keys to his treasures, they would find it difficult to carry those keys. Imagine today you got one credit card. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, one little card and it sorts your problem. And here we have Allah says, look how much real wealth we gave this man. Allahu Akbar. And Allah says he had one problem. What was his problem? Haughtiness, arrogance. He says, Qala innama ala ilmin indi. That was his problem. He says all this wealth I got, it's because of me, my brain, my intellect, my plan, my deal. I was the one who was witty. I was the one who did this. It was me and I am the big earner and I am the one who succeeded and it was only my effort and I, I, I and me, me, me. Allahu Akbar. That was him. He never related anything that he received or earned to Allah. Nothing at all. Everything was me. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ when his people, the people around him told him, Hey, make sure that this does not result in your arrogance. You're becoming too happy here. This happiness which is beyond the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a haughtiness. Don't be haughty. Allah does not like those who are haughty in this particular way, despising other people, thinking that you can do what you want only because you've got the money. But no, he says, it's me. I made the plan. I am the one. I serve the people. People are earning because of me. I am the big king. I am the boss. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to fix him. But before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fixed him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there were certain people. They looked at his wealth. Ya layta lana mithla ma utiya qarun. Innahu ladhu haddin azim. Oh, we wish we had what Qarun was given. Indeed, he has a great share, a very big share. Look at his share. He's got so much. How we wish we had that. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا The people who had knowledge told these others who were wishing for the wealth of Qarun, Don't do that. Indeed, the good deeds are better for you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't wish for what Allah has given him. Allah has given it to him, but he is a transgressor. So we cannot wish for that type of wealth. We cannot wish for that. Our eyes should not extend to that which Allah has blessed some people in a way that we want it for ourselves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and save us from greed. And may Allah make us content with what we have. These knowledgeable people were saying, if you do good deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is better for you. And Allah says this in the Quran in more places. In a few places in the Quran, Allah says, those extra deeds, those tasbihat, those acts of worship that you do, those are better in the eyes of Allah than all your wealth and your children that you have in this world. May Allah grant us steadfastness. So Allah says after that, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ فَمَا كَانَ لَهُ مِنْ فِئَةٍ يَنْصُرُونَهُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُنْتَصِرِينَ we caused the earth to swallow him up with everything he owned. Everything was swallowed. In the morning, the people saw everything was gone totally. 
Qarun and his cronies together with his properties, together with all his wealth, everything was swallowed by the earth. Out. And Allah says, nobody could help him against Allah. He couldn't help himself and nothing could assist him at all. Allahu Akbar. He used to come out. Allah speaks about how what he used to do prior. He used to come out and show off his wealth. Prior to him being swallowed up, he used to come out with all his wealth. He used to show his gold and his silver and what he has. One wonders how much he had. And this is a lesson for us. We should never be show-offs. Never. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. When Allah has given you, he has the capacity to take it away. So be humble. Humble down to the ground. No matter what Allah has given you, remember, he has the capacity to take it away from you. And not only that, he is the giver. So thank him. And remember, use whatever you have to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today in our lives, mashallah, we like to build plush homes. When you have lots of wealth, the first dream, I'll get a car, I'll get a home, I'll do this, I'll, I'll get married, I'll do that, I'll have so many children, I'll, I'll do this for them, I'll do that. all these plans. Where are our plans to say when I get so much wealth, I will divide this wealth and one third of it, I'm going to spend it in the path of Allah. Where are our ideas? We want to build the Akhirah, don't we? Two and a half percent is compulsory. We don't want to talk about that. We want to talk about over and above that which is compulsory. Indeed in wealth, there is a right over and above that which Allah has squeezed out of you. What does that mean? That means two and a half percent is farad. Let's talk about that which is more. I want to pause for a moment. We are in no rush to complete the stories of the prophets because we will have after Ramadan a part two inshallah. Because if we rush, we might not be able to do justice to the topics. So if anyone is thinking, will we finish? The idea is not to finish. We want to continue the goodness inshallah. The idea is to continue learning. You see, if you look at every act of worship, let's look at salah. You have farad, which is the compulsory, and then you have sunnah and nafil. Let's look at fasting. You have farad and then you have sunnah and nafil. Let's look at, for example, hajj. You have the hajj and then you have the umrah, which is not compulsory. People fulfill. In all those three cases, these are pillars of Islam. We fulfill the farad and we fulfill more sunnah and nafil than the farad. You tell me the salah we have, how much farad salah we have, compare it to what is sunnah and nafil. The sunnah and nafil is much more. You tell me, for example, when it comes to fasting, you have one month of compulsory fasting. If you, con if you calculate the sunnah fast through the year, it's much more than a month. Because you have three days every month, you have two days every week, already that is far beyond a month. And when it comes to hajj, everyone who can afford it would love to go for umrah, and they continue going, and they go for more than one hajj sometimes. This is why you have to have sahuk, S-A, hook. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from amongst those who are hooked. But we should be, may Allah make it easy for us really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to fulfill our hajj. And may he accept from all those who are trying to facilitate for the hujjaj, the hajj. May he accept that as an act of worship from them. There are many organizations that try to facilitate. Whether it is Sahuk or anyone else, whoever else it is, Khidmatul Hujjaj, Khidmatul Awam, whatever it is, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all these efforts. So when it comes to charity, it's one of the only pillars of Islam where we find ourselves clinging to the two and a half percent. And when it comes to the Sunnah and Nafil, we find ourselves a bit stingy. I think we need to check ourselves a little bit more on that front and improve because it is the only pillar of Islam where we find ourselves with the farad alone and the sunnah and nafil it's actually a little bit of a distance may Allah open our doors so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this man used to boast and he used to brag about his wealth and he used to show it off and pretend like you people don't have I have you know and people wanted to copy him we said that in the Quran moments ago some people said we want like him so when he had something everyone else wanted it when he had that type of a vehicle few members in the community wanted it now the vehicle is the example of our life here why do we give it because we need to know that we have a sickness sometimes we want to follow the rich and famous everything they do we want to do those who are above us according to us in terms of dunya we want to do why don't we think for a moment let us try and adopt the lifestyle of those who are more religious than us may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors so Allah says after that 
وأصبح الذين تمنوا مكانه بالأمس يقولون ويك أن الله يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء من عباده ويقدر لولا أمن الله علينا لخسف بنا ويك أنه لا يفلح الكافرون In the morning the people who were wishing to have the wealth that he had when they got up they saw what had happened that he was completely non-existing swallowed up by the earth and they said ya allah you give wealth to whomsoever you wish just as well we didn't get this wealth had we been given the wealth similar to fir'aun today we would have also been sucked in or eaten up swallowed up by the earth just like he has may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so when you follow someone if they receive punishment you receive punishment when you follow someone, if they are get going to the masjid, you'll end up in the masjid. When you follow someone, if they are going to the clubs, you go to the club. When you're following someone, if they have led to themselves to destruction, you're not very far behind them. We'd rather follow someone who is on the right path so that we can be led. May Allah grant us a lesson from this particular story as well. The last story, the incident that we'd like to make mention of, is a very beautiful story in Surah Al-Kahf. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the time when Musa alayhi salam was asked a question by someone. Ya Musa, we want to know who is the most knowledgeable person. Tell us who has most knowledge. He said, well, it's me because I have. We are thinking how he must have been thinking. He has revelation. He has the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can there be someone more knowledgeable than him? So he says, it's me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him. No, Ya Musa, nobody can know everything there is to know in knowledge. But we send down knowledge in pockets. So you might have one person who has excelled in one field, one who has excelled in another, the other one who has excelled in a third, one has excelled in spirituality, one is a top this, one is a top that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses some with more than one, but not everything. So Allah wanted to show Musa alayhi salam, there is a certain pocket of knowledge which we have granted someone besides you. Musa alayhi salam was interested to know, who is this? I want to see him, because if he's around, he has to be from my ummah, because he has to follow Musa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the instructions and he followed. Before we get to the instructions, let's remember one thing. We need to benefit from one another's knowledge. From amongst us, there are top doctors, top dermatologists who know what they are speaking about. Top maybe cardiologists, there are top accountants, top all sorts of people. There are top plumbers from amongst us, alhamdulillah. There are top doctors and all sorts of people. And there are also top ulama, senior ulama, successful people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the use of all of them. And remember the ones who we need to be closest to are those who will take us into the akhirah. Those are the ulama. So in the same way, when you know you have a heart problem, what do you do? You make sure you've got a friend who's a cardiologist. Because you call him at one at night. He says, no problem, I'm coming free of charge he checks you you've got a friend we are sometimes suffering spiritual cholesterol in our systems where we are about to die of a spiritual heart attack we know no alim we are not in a link with any scholar of islam we have absolutely no spiritual doctor near us in fact when we look at them we hate them so what happens we die of spiritual heart attack and we move around like a dead person allah speaks about this in the quran Allahu Akbar. Allah says, the one who moves with nur and the one who has light, is he similar to the one who's walking around like a dead man, completely dead? This means spiritually, some people are totally dead. They don't have even, they don't even know that they have so much cholesterol. May Allah protect us. Today, we are so advanced when it comes to medicine that a person has a slight pain in, on his right arm and immediately he makes an appointment. A person sees slight red discoloration on his hand and the dermatologist next thing he's there. Mashallah. And believe me, Cape Town has some of the best. So it is important for us to know that all this knowledge, it will not benefit us beyond our graves. It won't. 
unless we have spent it in the right direction and unless we have learnt about what will benefit us beyond the death of an individual. And that will come with the ulama. This is why it is very important for us to know if we are to split knowledge into two pieces. To say that there is knowledge connected to the dunya and knowledge connected to the akhirah. That knowledge which is connected to this world and the knowledge which is collected, connected to life after death. We would come to realize that more than half of what we need is within the knowledge of the deen and religion and spirituality. Because religion you need it whilst you're alive and it's the only thing that's going to help you after you're dead. You know, you cannot bury a plumber with all copper pipes thinking that, you know, subhanallah, uh, this is what's going to help me. With all due respect to plumbers and everybody else. But if that plumber was charitable, if he was a good Muslim, if he made sure that he fulfilled his charities, he assisted people, he helped out wherever he could. If the doctor, for example, had good character, good conduct, and he made sure he assisted humanitarian crises wherever they were, where, how much he could within his capacity. And he had his own quota of people that he may look for to for free and so on charitable then alhamdulillah he is earning in the process his akhirah but how will he know that he'll know it when he learns the deen and he'll know it when he starts adopting what allah has instructed so this is something we needed to pause upon because it's our life many of us have spent years on end studying a certain field and we've succeeded We've succeeded so well that we've built ourselves palaces and castles, mashallah, in the dunya. And we're driving the latest vehicles and so on. Let us also ask ourselves, how much have I done to build my akhirah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Musa alayhi salam was instructed to take his lunch and to go on a certain path on the coast. Now the lunch was made up of some items in a basket and it had in it a little fish. Some narrations say it was alive, it was in water, in a little container. Maybe that's how they used to carry it at the time because without the refrigeration and so on, they might wanted fresh fish. So maybe, and some narrations say, no, it was actually a dead fish. Let's take the one which says it was a fish that was not dead. It was in the water, in a little container. So as they walked, Musa alayhi salam got tired at a certain point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُوبًا Allah is making mention of how Musa alayhi salam got a certain young man with him and told him let's walk and we are going to go. Allah has given us a task. We want to walk on the coast here and we want to get to a certain place. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَجْمَعَ بَيْنِهِمَا نَسِيَا حُوتَهُمَا فَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ سَرَبَا when they got to a certain place, Musa alayhi salam was tired and they relaxed, they sat down and he lied down and as he lied down, it was a place where the two seas meet or the ocean met the sea, a place where the two had met and that is where the fish suddenly got out and got into the sea and it was gone. Now one narration says the young boy saw this, he saw it. But Musa alayhi salam was asleep. So he said, I'll wait for Musa alayhi salam to get up and then I will tell him. But when Musa alayhi salam got up, he forgot. They started walking once again. And he took the basket and he carried on walking. Now the fish was gone. Their lunch was gone. After a while, Allah says, فَلَمَّا جَاوَزَا قَالَ لِفَتَاهُ آتِنَا غَدَاءَنَا لَقَدْ لَقِينَا مِنْ سَفَرِنَا هَذَا نَصَبَا After a while, he got tired. He says to his young man, he says, you know what? Give us our lunch. Now we're very tired on this road. We've gone a long, long, long way. He says, you know, when we were back there at that rock resting, then I remember what happened to that fish, that lunch of ours. The fish found its way into the sea in a most amazing, astonishing manner. And I forgot to tell you. And it is only shaitan who made me forget. Look at how he blames shaitan. Once again, we learn this again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. It is reported that when you forget something, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your doors. You remember Allah, Allah will remind you. So when we forget something, it is from shaitan. وَمَا أَنْسَانِيهُ إِلَّا الشَّيْطَانِ When you forget something good, it's from shaitan. 
So this is why we should constantly try and remember that which is good. How to increase your memory. Cut out everything unnecessary from your life. We're not talking of sin. Sin here is supposed to be out anyway. But we're talking of unnecessary. Some people have a habit of sitting and chit-chatting late at night. Following morning they can't remember how many raka'at in fajr. But there's only two. They can't remember. Why? Because your mind has rewinded all night the beautiful stories you had all night and you're standing now in salah and you just, you can't remember. Too much on, in your head. Take out some of that. This is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي One of the signs of a good Muslim is that he leaves that which does not concern him. It doesn't concern me, throw it out. Today we are at an age where we are bothered about everybody else's life. And this is a problem wholesale. Nobody can say I'm not guilty. When we hear a juicy rumor, mashallah, it's like we squeezing the lemon. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Really, we need to be bothered about our own lives. Cut out unnecessary riffraff and see how your memory improves. May Allah open our doors. So this man, he says, look, that is what happened there when we were at the rock. So Musa alayhi salam says, Thalika ma kunna nabugh. That is exactly what I wanted. That is what we wanted. That is the place that I was supposed to, you know, be at, where the fish comes out, where something happens. So this is what happened. So they went back following their footsteps to the exact place where this fish had gone. Allah says, They found a worshipper of ours. And they could see from his face, this man is pious, pious man. He is known as Al-Khidr. He was not a Nabi. He was not a prophet. He was only a pious man. And he had a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was from the Ummah of Musa alayhi salam. He was following the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam. But Allah had given him some knowledge. Some knowledge that was not given to Musa alayhi salam. And this was just a point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was proving to Musa alayhi salam. So Allah says, فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا They found a worshipper of ours whom we had blessed from blessings from us and whom we had granted knowledge directly from us. Allah gave him knowledge. قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ Musa alayhi salam says, May I please be in your company. May I follow you please. He was walking. Musa alayhi salam says, Please, may I follow you? Ala antu alimani mimma ulim tarushda. So that you can teach me, so that I can learn a little bit of this wisdom and guidance that Allah has given you. Qala inna kalan testatiya ma'iya sabara. He says, Oh Musa, you are not going to be able to bear patience with me, not with me. You will be very impatient, agitated by what you see when you are in my company. So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam says, no, I will definitely be patient. You will find me, I won't question you in anything. So this man says, you are not going to be able to be patient. How are you going to be patient regarding that which you have no knowledge about? He says, Inshallah, you will find me to be patient. I won't question and you will find me not going against any of your instructions. So Allah says, he agreed and they started walking. As they were walking, they needed to cross the water. So they jumped into a boat, a boat made of planks. And as they jumped into the boat, the first thing they saw is a little bird, a bird sitting on the plank and it dipped its beak into the water. It says once or twice, it dipped its beak. And Al-Khidr tells Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, did you see this? He says, yes, I saw it. Did you see the amount of water being displaced when the beak of the bird went into the ocean like this? He says, yes, I saw it. He says, the comparison of the knowledge of Allah with that that we have is similar to one little droplet and the whole ocean which Allah has. So Allah's knowledge is like the whole ocean. And we only have a little droplet. Whatever was displaced by that beak going in and coming out. That's all. Now imagine what knowledge Allah has. Now who wants to know one description? Like that there are so many descriptions of the knowledge of Allah. Some of you may have heard this before. يَعْلَمُ مَا كَانَ وَمَا يَكُونُ وَمَا لَمْ يَكُنْ إِذَا كَانَ كَيْفَ يَكُونُ Allah knows 
what has happened in the past. He knows what is happening now and what will happen in the future. And over and above that, he knows what will not happen, is not going to happen. If it were to happen, how it would have happened. That's the knowledge of Allah. Let's follow that again. He knows what is not going to happen. If it were to happen, how it would have happened. That's the knowledge of Allah. And we will see that in this story. Something that didn't happen, it was never going to happen, meaning in reality. But Allah says, had we allowed it to happen, this is how it would have happened. Subhanallah. The knowledge, look at how deep the knowledge of Allah is. And this is what Al-Khidr is trying to tell Musa. So anyway, as they, as they saw that, moments later, Musa alayhi salam sees Al-Khidr tear out one of the planks from the, ro from the boat. And immediately he says, what are you doing? How can you take this plank out? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it beautifully in the Quran. Musa alayhi salam said, Are you, you want to drown these people here? And it is reported that these people, when they saw these Musa alayhi salam and Al Khidr come, they even, according to one narration, they didn't really want recompense. They didn't want any recompense. So Musa alayhi salam is saying, Look, they did us a favor, and now this is what you want to do in return. Do you want to drown them or what? So he says, didn't I tell you you will have no patience with me, O Musa? He says, hey, hey, sorry, I forgot. O Musa is apologizing. He says, look, 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 I'm really sorry. And don't, it was just forgetfulness. And now I won't ask you anything. So they carried on. Allah says, فانطلق. They were passing by. After that, they went on to the coast and they started walking again. Walking quite quickly. They saw a few children playing. Al-Khidr gets hold of one of them, kills them and carries on. He says, You're killing an innocent child for no reason whatsoever. Nothing at all. How can you do such a bad deed? He says, didn't I tell you you will not be able to bear patience? Yeah, Musa. No patience. So he says, Okay. Musa says, Okay, okay, okay. Now, if I question anything, then you don't have, I don't have to be in your company. You don't have to have me in your company. It's okay. This is the last. So they started walking. As they're walking, they entered the town. When they entered the town, they asked those people, look, we are strangers, we are a little bit hungry, we want a place, we want a bit of food. The people said, sorry, you're going to have to walk. Here, you are strangers, we are not going to entertain you at all. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as they were leaving, فَوَجَدَا فِيهَا جِدَارًا يُرِيدُ أَن يَنْقَضَّ فَأَقَامَهُ قَالَ لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا as they saw a wall, they saw a wall when they were leaving that was almost falling. So Al-Khidr stops for a while and made an effort to straighten the wall and solidify it, make it strong. And then he walked away. So Musa alayhi salam says, لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا You know what? These people refused. These people refused to even any form of hospitality. No food, no accommodation, nothing. If you wanted, we could have told him, we'll fix your wall, pay us. Why did you fix a wall without any recompense? So Al-Khidr says, Hada firaqu bayni wa baynik. Thank you very much. It's now enough. This is the splitting between me and you. You go your way and I go my way. I know what the time is, but I think we need to spend a few moments to explain what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Khidr says, I will explain. I'm going to explain to you now what I did. The first thing he says, Amma safinatu. فَكَانَتْ لِمَسَاكِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ فِي الْبَحْرِ فَأَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَعِيبَهَا وَكَانَ وَرَاءَهُمْ مَلِكٌ يَأْخُذُ كُلَّ سَفِينَةٍ وَصْبَا As for the, the boat, it belonged to two poor people who were making money by ferrying people to and fro and there was a king downstream who was 
usurping all the good boats. He was taking all the good boats. So they were checking the boat. If there was no defect, they were taking it. So I made a defect in the boat in order to save it so that they maintained their boat. Subhanallah. Point number one. Musa alayhi salam did not know. Now something that was... The, the king was never going to take that particular boat. Are you following what I'm saying? Because Allah knew that there was going to be a hole in it. But Allah knew that had there not been a hole, it would have probably been taken. Subhanallah. It would have been taken. The next one. He says, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Wallahi, when you are earning halal sustenance, working hard, Allah will protect your wealth when everyone else's wealth is crashing. That's a lesson we learn. They say halal sustenance will always return to you. But when you've made money with the wind, it goes with the wind as well. Allah protect us. So that's one lesson we learn. Work hard, strive. Allah will grant you a little but good with barakah. And he might even open your doors further. The next lesson. He says, as for that boy who I killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me that had this child lived, he would have been a means of great sadness to his parents and a means of oppression to his parents. And he would have been a huge burden on his parents. So we caused his death right here and right now. So Allah would grant the parents other children who will be better and who will be able to look after their parents and be a means of the coolness of their eyes. So this is what happened. Now this doesn't mean when you see unruly youngsters outside there, you need to engage in this type of behavior. We are not Al-Khidr and Musa alayhi salam is not with us here. But what it does mean, and I want to draw a lesson for all those who have ears. If Allah has taken your child away at a young age, consider it a blessing from Allah. Not to say the child was going to be or not going to be because we don't know anything. But it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The child insha'Allah will be waiting in the akhirah for you and will by the will of Allah intercede on your behalf and plead with Allah to grant you Jannah. So that is a lesson. Do not become overly depressed when you've lost a child at young age. Look at the positives of it. Do not concentrate on negatives. When we concentrate on negatives, we become depressed. When we become depressed, khasira dunya wal akhirah. We lose this dunya and we lose the akhirah. The third one, the last one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Khidr is explaining to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, wa amma al-jidaru fakana li ghulamayn yatimayn fi al-madinah wa kana tahtahu kanzun lahuma wa kana abuhuma saliha فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي Allahu Akbar He says as for the wall Underneath that wall was a treasure Belonging to two young orphans Whose father was a pious man And had the wall fallen The treasure would have been exposed And the people would have usurped it so Allah instructed me to strengthen the wall so that it will only collapse the day those young people become older. Again, halal sustenance with a pious parent. The pious parent making dua for the child. Ya Allah, protect my children. We spoke about two of them today. We had one earlier with that man with the calf. And this is another one. Allahu Akbar. This teaches us a great lesson. When we put our trust in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ourselves are pious and we are concerned about our piety, Allah will take care of our children. When we ourselves need panel beating, our children might be a write-off. Allah protect us. Yes. So this is why it's important for us. In the same way, if you have a car, a vehicle, since I said panel beating, if it needs panel beating, you will feel shy to drive it dented until you repair it. Why do we move dented spiritually? We never repair or panel beat what we need to spiritually. And then we are not shy. May Allah protect us. I hope we've understood that similarity and example. So Al-Khidr tells Musa alayhi salam, you see, I did not do this out of my own. Each item I was instructed. Why did he say that? Because according to the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam, he would have been penalized for murder. The Ten Commandments had come down, do not murder. Now this man is saying this was the instruction of Allah. Musa alayhi salam knows it was the instruction of Allah because Allah told him, wait, there is someone who has more knowledge than you. And here he had the explanation. I want to end off with one beautiful Arabic grammatical benefit from the Quran. 
Allah says after that, He says, ذَلِكَ تَأْوِيلُ مَا لَمْ تَسْطِعْ عَلَيْهِ صَبْرًا That is the explanation of what you could not bear patience regarding. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, We hope that Musa alayhi salam would have had more patience so we could have learned a bit more from that al-khidr. And I'm sure all of us feel the same. MashaAllah. Three, little three incidents we've learned, but we could have learned much more. So the grammatical benefit is, before Musa alayhi salam knew the explanation, the term used was tastata', which means you find it difficult to understand. We will explain it to you. And when everything was explained, it was so simplified that the term used is tastata', which means this is something that you couldn't even bear the simplest of patience about. Something which is so easily understood now. And this is why the term tasta' is used. To go back, the difference between the two is tasta' shows you that there is greater difficulty to understand it. And tasta' means it is so simple to understand now that it has been explained. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. As I said, we are in no rush to finish the stories of the prophets. And inshallah, whatever we do not complete in Ramadan, we will have a part two later on by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness until we meet again tomorrow. With some more, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammadin subhanallahi wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma bihamdi kanashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.